fascist states of America. Since this United case, one year ago, we said the corporations have the same rights of people to spend their money however they want on elections. There's almost no restrictions, and that's the way it should be because corporations are people. Don't you see what's happening in the United States? We voted to give the corporations even more control over our elections than they already had. And we sold out the American people one more time. I'm Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and I voted against this awful idea. I'm Justice Clarence Thomas, and I'm an Oreo. I believe my colleagues just bought the best democracy money can buy. Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracies, the Populist Dialogues. My name is David Delk and I host this series of half-hour weekly cable television programs brought to you from the studios of Portland Community Media here in Portland, Oregon. The Alliance for Democracy's mission is to end corporate domination, to establish a just society based on a sustainable, equitable economy, and to create or uh, establish true democracy. If you're interested in the Alliance for Democracy, visit our national website at www.afd-pdx.org. I'm sorry, that's actually the Portland website. The national website is www.thealliancefordemocracy.org. So today we are going to have uh, David Cobb, who has visited us with us before. Uh, David is the chief spokesperson for Move to Men. He formerly was not a candidate for attorney general running on the Green Party candidate uh, for attorney general in Texas. Uh, he also ran as the Green Party candidate for uh, the U.S. president in 2004. And so welcome to the program again. Well, thank you, David. It's a pleasure to be back here on uh, this program. And I do want to remind your viewers, the only reason you're hearing a conversation like this where we're actually telling the truth about who is actually running this country is because you're watching a community rate or pardon me a community media source in other words this is non corporately filtered news information and analysis so i really want to underscore how pleased i am to be having this conversation and how you the viewer should really contextualize the fact that you're hearing these kinds of conversations precisely because we the people are using our own opportunity for media to talk to one another. I think that's a very important yeah. point. And actually that reminds me, when I do that introduction, I say cable. I really shouldn't say that. I should say public access cable because we're here on a publicly provided uh, platform. And in fact, it's Portland community media uh, right. and it's Portlanders talking to one another without that corporate filter. Right. I think that's powerful. Right. Yeah. So thank you for correcting me. You didn't correct me, but thank you for allowing my, me to correct myself. I'll change that in the future. You bet. Right, yeah, right. So you were here two months ago, maybe three months ago, and why are you back? Well, I'm back for a couple of reasons. One, because uh, Portland is, in fact, a, a hotbed of progressive populism. Uh, this is a place where we, the people, are beginning to work together. Uh, the national coalition that I represent moved to amend uh, has found that Portlanders are excited about the idea of a people's movement that will actually take our country back from these corporate hooligans who have hijacked it. Because, David, 
the reality is that today, these unelected and unaccountable corporate CEOs, they're not merely exercising power. They are ruling us. As surely as masters once ruled their slaves or kings once ruled subjects, unelected and unaccountable corporate CEOs are ruling us because they're making the fundamental public policy decisions that affect all of our lives. Can you just give us a, a concrete example of how that works? Sure. Here's one. I mean, every one of the folks who are watching us today are eating genetically mutated organisms. Uh, why? Are they choosing to do that? Well, who made the decision? Well, we know who made the decision. Monsanto Corporation, Archer Daniels Midland Corporation, Pioneer Hybrid Corporation, big, huge mega corporations made the decision to put GMOs into our public food supply. Yet they made that public policy decision and claimed that it was a private corporate decision, made it behind boardroom doors so that we the people were not only not allowed to have any meaningful participation in that decision, we didn't even know the decision was being made mm -hmm. until after the fact. Mm -hmm. And we could do the same thing with our transportation choices, our health care options, uh, whether or not this country goes to war or not. All of those big picture decisions are usually being made behind corporate boardroom doors, and we are presented with an array of consumer products. Choose between Coke or Pepsi. Choose between paper or plastic. Choose between uh, this kind of entertainment system or not. We're given consumer choices, but we are rarely given the opportunity to actually help create the institutions in which we live. And that, David Delk, would be real democracy when we are meaningfully participating in the decisions that affect our lives. Meaningful participation, doesn't it really happen at the local level? Can it ever really happen at the national level? Well, I would tell you this. I think that our power is much greater at the local level. Wherever we live, work, and play is where we have the most power. Uh, it's where we have the most political power. It's where we have the most economic power. It's where we have the most social power. So you're absolutely right that at the local level is where the real action is. But I have not given up on the idea of the, the state or even the nation. Uh, I think that the United States of America could be a more democratic place. It could be a more progressive place. It could be a more sustainable place. But it will not be that place as long as we allow these huge corporations to hijack our legal system, our political system, and in fact, to hijack our very culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and when, the, when our nation was founded, our founding fathers, uh, they gave the right to regulate corporations to states. In fact, it's even deeper than that. It's not simply the right to regulate uh, uh, the corporation is given to the states. Uh, the Constitution is a profound document, David, because it is a form of, it describes limited government, and it also describes that we, the people, as human beings, citizens of the United States, have core fundamental rights that can never be violated. Uh, the Constitution does not create rights. Mm -hmm. The Constitution recognizes rights, pre-existing rights, rights that you have as a human being. Uh, and that's why, and I hope we'll talk about this in a bit, but that's why it's so important uh, when the Supreme Court, in an act of supreme judicial iron, uh, activism, says that, oh no, corporations should be also considered persons with constitutional rights. It completely perverts the democratic republic. The, the opportunity for we the people to govern ourselves is stripped away. Mm -hmm. And I do want to get back to this idea that in the founding, uh, it was very clear that corporations were created by state government through a, a chartering process. That charter was typically only five to seven years. Um, and before the privilege of incorporating was granted, uh, the corporation could only do a very specific thing, and that specific thing had to be a public need that was articulated and identified that was not being met by either existing governmental regulation, or governmental agencies, or by private enterprise. And if at any moment the corporation was found to be acting outside the public interest in any way by, I don't know, say, destroying the ecosystem of the Gulf of Mexico mm -hmm. or killing miners in West Virginia or spewing toxic and poisons into the air that we all breathe or the water that we ought to drink, if any of those things that these big mega corporations do day in and day out today, that corporate charter would be revoked. The corporate death penalty was imposed on corporations. So I'm not saying it was the land of milk and honey. I mean, slavery existed, women were oppressed, workers were being taken advantage of. But David, in the founding of this country, 
the corporation as a social construct, as an instrument, was very tightly controlled and appropriately regulated to ensure that the will of the people uh, was not violated. But the problem, of course, in the founding of this country was not everybody got to be a person. Right, mm -hmm. right. And, and so I, I, I think you have said that about five to seven percent of the population in uh, when the nation was, was founded were actually regarded as citizens. So who was excluded? Well, that's right. I mean, I think that I hope that your viewers already know what uh, what I'm about to say, and maybe you'll like to uh, to repeat the characteristics with me, even as you're watching. Let's see if you can do it. In order to actually be a legal person uh, in the founding of this country in 1789, when the Constitution was ratified, you had to be white, you had to be male, you had to be a property owner. I bet most of you could actually do that off the top of your head, but think about the implications. What it meant was that if you were not white, male, property owner, you were not actually fully a, legally, a legal person. So in a very real way, for all the beautiful rhetoric associated with the founding of this country, uh, that rhetoric rings hollow because we know it's a founding violence. It's a founding violence against the indigenous who were here first and subject to intentional, deliberate genocide. It's an original founding violence against the slaves, uh, those Africans who were enslaved and brought at the point of a spear or the barrel of a gun and forced to build this country. Uh, it's a founding violence against women because it's not just that women couldn't vote, David. It's that women had no rights. Women couldn't own property. They were property. Um, and it's a founding violence against most white men because most of the white men who were here in this country, in the founding of this country, uh, were not actually fully vested citizens because they didn't own enough property. I think that the important thing to remember is the principles of the creation myth of this country are profound, they are real, the principles are there, but they were never lived up to. It is our job in this generation to do what prior generations have done, which is to engage in social movement building to make the country live up to its promise. You know, Martin Luther King Jr. said that the civil rights movement was trying to cash the check that was written in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. I think that's what we ought to be about mm -hmm. today, too. You know, every great social movement from the abolition of slavery, the women's suffrage movement, the trade union movement, the civil rights movement, all of these movements have been, at their core, democracy movements. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they were about ensuring that more people had power. You know, and I actually want to be part of a progressive populist movement that makes real the promise of a democratic republic in the United States of America. Excellent. Good. One of the things that I notice is when you describe what the original citizens were or what their characteristics were, those are not characteristics of corporations at all. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, and I'm glad you bring us back to this point, David. I know that the in incredible introductory footage that uh, you have here for the uh, Populist Dialogues involves a play, uh, a little political theater that mm -hmm. you and your colleagues from the Alliance for Democracy did here in Portland to demonstrate the audacity of the Supreme Court in its most recent uh, example, a ruling that corporations are persons with inherent constitutional rights. Uh, that's because in order to, uh, to legalize and justify the continual oppression and, and, and uh, destruction that corporations are playing and to overturn laws that attempt to control their harm and abuse, uh, the court has granted the idea, they literally created out of whole cloth this legal doctrine that a corporation should be considered the same thing as a human being with inherent constitutional rights. It's of course not true. A corporation is a business, uh, a for-profit corporation is a business, a not-for-profit is a collection of individuals who have come together to do some certain thing. I have nothing against uh, business corporations, I have nothing against not-for-profit corporations, but I'm saying that the idea of people coming together to either do business or uh, to engage in, in some other charitable pursuit, that new entity that's formed has not all of a sudden been endowed with inherent inalienable rights. They have not created a new human being. And to say otherwise is absurd, it's ridiculous, and it's important because that is the doctrine that is the linchpin for how the small ruling elite have hijacked our country They've hijacked our institutions, they've hijacked our very government, and they are using the legal system to legalize that theft. Mm -hmm. And so you and Move to Amend are advocating amending the Constitution, perhaps in one amendment, or perhaps in a series of amendments, 
uh, eliminating corporate, corporate personhood. Yes, uh, because remember, David, that this idea of corporate personhood or stated specifically corporations claiming the constitutional rights that are only available to human persons, this doctrine was created by the Supreme Court and implemented by the judiciary. Uh, and in doing so, the court overturned democratic legislation, in other words, laws that had already been created. We don't see a way out of being able to fix the, and correct the error that the court made uh, without going through a, an amendment process. I mean, you can't legislate, we can't uh, go to our legislators and make a new law because the court will simply overturn that law. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty clear that we need to do uh, what the abolitionists did and what the women's suffrage movement did and correct the court's horrendous mistake. And in doing so, David, we will not, it's not just a legal strategy, it's also a movement strategy. We need to be engaging our friends and neighbors in this conversation. We need to be going to uh, pool halls and bowling alleys. We need to go to political forums and asking the question of people who claim that they want to represent us. Hey, candidate, do you believe that corporations are persons with constitutional rights? If not, will you join us in a, in a movement to amend the Constitution to correct the court's error? Because, David, if anybody, whether they're running for Soil and Conservation District or U.S. Congress or President of the United States, if they're not willing to stand with us, we the people, uh, on this issue, it is the central issue of the day. Who will rule? We the people are these large corporations. If a candidate is not willing to get on the right side of that issue, I say they don't represent me. It, it would appear that um, a lot of people understand this when it's presented to them, but we don't. Uh, I think most people don't think that this is something that can be changed. It's part of the world as it exists. Uh, it has existed this way forever. Well, first of all, it hasn't existed it this hasn't, way forever. No. Uh, remember that the, for the first uh, 75 years of this country, corporations were very tightly controlled to begin with. I mean, they could, the charter only lasted five to seven years. They could only do specific things that they were granted to be done. The corporate charter to be created had to actually go uh, be passed by the entire legislature. Um, and uh, corporate charter revocation proceedings were initiated any time a corporation acted outside the public interest. So that's one, that's reality. Mm -hmm. That's not just the Green Party's platform on how to deal with corporations, although it is that. It's, <laughs> it's also our own history. So we're saying let's return to our history. Uh, but even deeper than that, this legal doctrine of corporate personhood or corporations having constitutional rights, it was not the case for the first 120 years of this country. Um, the first time the court ever did it, of course, was 1886, uh, but it's only been in the last 25 years that you've really seen a body of law build up around this idea of corporate personhood. So it's a very recent phenomenon. And I wonder, viewer, do you think the current state of our economic degradation, our environmental destruction, uh, do you think that maybe that has something to do with the fact uh, that these large corporations have been granted more and more power by the court system? That's why I'm so excited to be working with uh, principled conservatives and, and Tea Party members who are willing to work with me on this movement. We've got a broad and deep movement, David, that includes principled conservatives, it includes liberals, it includes radicals, it includes independents, it includes moderates. Basically, almost everybody except for the ruling elite, when you lay this out, agrees, well, this is stupid. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is beyond bipartisan. This is across the whole political spectrum. It is across the entire political ideology. I'm proud to tell you, uh, David, that we've got uh, certainly Green Party members and uh, progressive Democrats. We've also got Republicans. The founder of TeaParty.org signed the uh, oh, petition mm -hmm. at MoveToAmend.org. And I do want to encourage viewers, folks, if this conversation has been interesting to you, if, if you have actually gotten to the point where you think that this is a, you know, an exciting movement that you'd like to join, uh, here in Portland, the uh, Alliance for Democracy is a great place to touch down for sure. Uh, but at the very least, I'm going to ask you to do this. Go to your uh, computer, get online, type in movetoamend.org, add your name to that petition. Uh, because this is not a petition we're going to just submit to elected officials. This is an organizing petition. You'll join 112,000 other Americans and the number grows. Uh, and we intend to take this country back. We'll get you in touch with other people, uh, and we'll share with you 
actually non-corporately filtered news, like the fact that uh, a resolution passed in Madison, Wisconsin, where 84% of the people said, amend the Constitution, corporations don't have rights. There's a movement going on, David. It's broad, it's deep, uh, and it cuts across the political spectrum, and we want to encourage your viewers of the Populist Dialogues to join us. Right, yeah, and so you've been in Oregon touring uh, yes. through a number of, of smaller towns and here in Portland, and what's, what, where did you go and what has been the reaction? Well, uh, I, I was all day in Eugene doing a training. Uh, I was uh, just yesterday in Portland doing an all day training with the Alliance for Democracy. And in between that time, uh, let's see, Ashland, Medford, uh, Roseburg, Florence, Salem, um, maybe Hood River. Hood River. Uh, you know, I've been, uh, I've been enjoying the beauty that is. Uh, uh, Oregon, uh, but uh, I've most importantly been meeting ordinary Oregonians who are who are pissed off. Uh, they do not like the fact that they feel that their government has been stolen. They understand and realize that the courts have been a facilitator of that theft and have tried to actually legalize the theft of our uh, democratic republic uh, and have been helping to organize. The, 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 the re reaction has been just stupendous. I mean, you know, overflow crowds in some places. Uh, local media have been covering us uh, as an ongoing story. Uh, we've done some other community access uh, program uh, tapings and programs the, like mm -hmm. I'm doing here. But most importantly, we've been identifying core organizers, people who are willing to do the work. So if you're watching this uh, somewhere else, I know that you can download it off the web. So if you're watching this anywhere in the country, uh, if you go to the website movetoamend.org, we can get you in touch with somebody in your community. No matter what state you're in, no matter what city you're in, uh, if you give us your zip code, we'll, we'll find a way to get you in touch with somebody who's doing the work. Right, yeah. One of the things you talk about is uh, sovereignty. And what, what does a sovereign people, what, what does that mean? Well, the word sovereign or sovereignty means the authority to rule. And in this country, we the people are supposed to be sovereign, which means we are supposed to rule ourselves. And that's why, to me, it is so important to acknowledge the truth that we the people are not really governing ourselves. We are not engaged in sovereign self-rule. Why? Because these unelected and unaccountable corporate CEOs are ruling us. They're making the decisions. So when you ask me what does sovereignty mean, I would say quite simply, it means the authority to rule. And in the United States, we the people are supposed to rule. We're supposed to be sovereign. We are supposed to be sovereign. And that sovereignty is being eroded every day by these huge corporations and by the judiciary. Okay. And the legislatures of the 50 states and the Congress are still there. Supposedly there are representatives, but your feeling is that doesn't work, or that's uh, not enough. Th well, it's not just that it's not enough, it's that this corporate money has become like a cancer that is mastitized within the body politic. I mean, uh, I don't know anybody, uh, whether they're a Democrat, a Republican, a Green, a Libertarian, who believes that the overwhelming majority of our elected officials are actually representing we the people. They know that they're representing the special interest. Um, and to me, it's clear that the special interests are mostly these big corporate fat cats. The funny thing is that principal conservatives think the special interests are the trade unions. Mm -hmm. Now, you and I know that trade unions uh, typically are uh, being outspent by about 10 to 1, up to 20 to 1. But even deeper than that, David, how about this? What if we said there shouldn't be any union money or corporate money in elections? Let's have true publicly funded elections so that really uh, we have a political debate uh, that is not corrupted by any special interest money uh, and we'll just let the best ideas decide. Right. That's something that I found that principal conservatives get on board with. Okay. And the, the last time you were here, you talked about mandatory publicly funded elections. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that that would be the way to go because I'd like to el uh, eliminate all money uh, in elections. Uh, individuals have the right to free speech. They can talk to their neighbors. They can, they can engage uh, in efforts to persuade, etc. But they can't spend money in an unlimited fashion because money is not speech. Money is property. And here's the thing. If the wealthy can spend as much money as they possibly can, what they do is buy speakers and microphones and amplifiers and they flood the market with radio and television ads so that they drown out the rest of the voices. Yeah, so we have about three minutes. I know there are two events that are coming up, uh, one in Madison and one 
uh, in Humboldt County. So about three minutes to talk about both of them. You got it. Thank okay. you, David. Uh, so August 24th through 28th in Madison, Wisconsin, uh, we the people are gathering at a democracy convention. Uh, there'll be uh, uh, tracks on media and democracy, racial justice and democracy, uh, ecology and democracy, and I'm hel helping to put together a constitutional reform track. We expect between 500 and 1,000 Americans. If you, the viewer, would like to get involved, go to democracyconvention.org and sign up. Come on out and tell me that you saw me on uh, uh, Populist Dialogues on Portland Community Media. Uh, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Uh, <laughs> the second event is something that I'm personally very excited about. It is a weekend-long deep democracy community training. It is for designed for individuals who are ready to dive in and dive in deep to learn the history that you and I just glossed over, uh, to learn exercises and techniques to be part of this growing democracy movement. You know, David, I like to say that Rosa Parks, the great champion of the civil rights movement, was not just tired one day and refused to give up her seat. She had gone through trainings. She had gone through strategy sessions. She had spent time preparing herself at a place called the Highlander Folk School or the Highlander Center. Well, Democracy Unlimited in Humboldt County, we aspire to be the new Highlander Center, the, the folk school for the democracy movement. If folks want to come there, it's October 7th through the 9th in Humboldt County. We'll feed you fresh organic food. We'll put you up and host you. But most importantly, we'll give you and about 20, 25 other people a chance to really experiment with what democracy is, to learn the history of the law, uh, and to learn what our strategy is to take our country back. Uh, and Humboldt County is the home of the, the Redwoods. It is. It's a beautiful place. Redwoods, uh, of course, the same uh, p crashing Pacific Ocean uh, that you can enjoy. And most importantly, uh, though, it's a place where we are gathering together to tell each other the truth and to engage in strategic dialogue and conversation. Uh, and one thing that I have experienced when I uh, participate in these deep democracy trainings, uh, that I learn as much from the participants as the participants learn from me. So if you're interested, if this makes sense to you, the website there is duhc.org. It stands for Democracy Unlimited of Humboldt County. Uh, you can also give us a call at 707 269-0984. Come in and, and learn to ha our plan to take our country back. Excellent. Thank you very much for being here, David. Always a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much. Great. Good. So that uh, concludes our program for today. We had the uh, graphics on both of the uh, Democracy Convention and the training in Humboldt County up earlier. Uh, we want to thank our crew today. Our crew today is Roger Bates. Hollis Benedict, Tom Thomas, and Joan Horton, thank you for being here, and we will see you again next week.